The second major key to mastering worry is to respond. Build up inside of you that heavy desire to be free, to get on with building your life and lifestyle. Too much is waiting to delay. Take a new look at your opportunities. Figure out new ways to seize them immediately and make them work for you. And here is a key. Bring a new dedication that you will master yourself with enough discipline to be more than qualified to do the present job and prepare yourself for the next move up. Expose yourself to every stimulation possible that will put all this in perspective. Now let's move on to a very important point, and that is the best answer to worry is confidence. First, self-confidence. I can better handle next winter. I have a strong shelter. It is stocked with supplies. I now know how to take advantage of the spring. I'm going to plant better crops and bigger crops. I can last through the summer. I won't quit this time. I'll study weeds and how to get rid of them. I'll be less frightened of the changing weather and the quick storms. In the fall, I will exercise more care and reap what I have without complaint and blame nothing for the amount of my harvest. I'll learn to save a fair portion so that I can survive the bad seasons when out of control the hailstorm comes and it all goes wrong. Now we must consider this. The most fatal deterrent to self-confidence is guilt. Not doing all you know how to do to the full extent of your present ability weakens the foundation for confidence. The biggest part of worry comes from the lack of this personal confidence. And lack of confidence comes from two major things. First, no goals or plans. And second, no daily discipline to achieve. The inaction to cure or handle small tasks is what starts the guilt process. And that always tends to make you look at what's wrong and expect the worst. So listen to the voices of creative experience. Let nature, experience, wisdom, books, everything speak to you and teach you. Remember, both opportunity and challenge await action. Everything yields to diligence. It's not what you can do, it's what you will do that counts. An undeveloped ability comes from three problems. First, lack of inspiration to find out. Second, lack of reasons to learn. And third, lack of applied time and action for developing those abilities. Remember, humans are remarkable, a marvelously functioning entity. Imagine how uniquely your body and mind have survived and managed to function in spite of all the worry. Humans don't die easy. They die hard. Develop a plan for your life rather than aimlessly drifting through it, the victim of circumstance. Create your own environment and learn to control it. You control your own mental environment by developing yourself. So go on a crash program to clean up decisions. Get things done. Get other things set up and started and organized. Start doing all the things that would make you feel better. Exercise, diet, reading more books. Open a floodgate of positive moves in the right direction. And be thankful. Add up what you do have. Make an actual as well as a conscious mental list of all you possess, tangible as well as intangible. In view of the four billion other inhabitants of the world, Yours is probably an incredible list. That list and being thankful should then lead to the big step of discipline. The discipline to sit up and listen. The discipline to pay attention. The discipline to give people and kids the gift of your attention. The discipline to be alert. Take care of yourself. Rest. Eat properly. The discipline to talk well and practice good manners. Courtesy is contagious. Take one day and see what a variety of positive steps you can take and projects you can take on. 
At the end of the day, go over it. Write out the positive steps, the progress on projects, the rest, the exercise, the meals, the hobbies, calls, records, conversations, and letters. And speaking of calls and letters, write at least one encouraging letter or thank you note and make at least one encouraging phone call or thank you call every week. Then have a friend help you, as one helped me, to get all the facts and prepare for action. From such a friendship, the greatest gift you can draw is the truth. To one of my dearest friends I said just the other day, as my friend, do me the one best thing you can do for me, and that is, tell me the truth. From there I can grow. I can start making wise decisions. We all admire poise, confidence, awareness, courtesy, good manners, courage, health, kindness, attention, beauty, speech, expression, and unhurried intensity, and talent at work. This can be your life. Say with me today, Today I will draw on all I've learned and practiced, from curiosity to confidence, and I will utilize it all to meet the experiences and challenges that may come my way or that I may seek out. And if all I know and do does not meet or match some unforeseen challenge or experience, I will keep careful notes and take them to my private conference table and try to figure them out and learn and grow. Mixed in my curiosity is thanks that I'm alive and able to see and feel and learn and handle and enjoy being human and being alive and having been given a chance to turn challenge into experience. How great to have a mind to expand and a soul to nourish, to have hands that can feel, a heart that can experience, a mind that can inquire and learn, a soul that can soar, a body that can respond, to know love, sadness, hope, disappointment, accomplishment, failure, thrills, terror, appreciation, bafflement, wonder, awe, frustration, misery, confidence, courage, contentment, impatience, expectation, apprehension, fulfillment, music, sound, pictures, art, beauty, and harmony. To have all this happen to one is one thing. To know it is all happening is much more. I wish for you that you might develop a growing awareness of the world around you and your possibilities in it. Develop a sense of history and destiny and be grateful for the opportunity that you have to participate in that grand endeavor. To sum it all up, first understand what worry is. You now know that it can be beneficial and destructive depending on your awareness. Next, resolve to be free of the habit. That job is up to you. To work on yourself, to get the right attitude. Next, start the daily action of first cleaning up all your current situations. Remember, little achievements lead to confidence that conquers guilt. Then buy up every challenge to reach your goal. You can now handle it, the winter, the spring, the harvest. Bring a new zeal to every problem, to every fear, to every opportunity. The inspiration from it all and the immediate and future progress that will someday give you a view from the top of your goals, your adventure, and your achievements. In conclusion, let me give you one piece of poetry that sums up what a life of adventure should be like and how you should feel. You are now a seasoned warrior. You bear the scars of honorable battle. And here is where you stand today. The familiar words of William Henley, Out of the darkness that covers me, black as the pit, from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. 
In the fell clutch of circumstance I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance my head is bloody but unbowed. It matters not how straight the gate, nor charge to punishments the scroll. I am the captain of my fate, I am the master of my soul. From all of my staff, and from myself personally, I want to thank you for listening. Let's do something remarkable.